you helping chopper did you measure that all by yourself okay anyways uh so i got these woods cut i'm gonna cut them um try not to get these knots in there otherwise you get holes so i'm gonna get rid of this knot this is gonna be a sheet here and a little sheet here and it'll be nine and three quarters I know this is out of context, but these were the plaques I was doing. And this is where my machine would just quit as it was planing this. You can see this is pretty warpy already. So that would take a lot of planing just to get level. So I figured, why am I wasting time with this junk when I got a perfect piece right here? It's already straight. Doesn't need much planing, maybe just enough to smooth it, but Realistically, this is good for a plaque. She'll be fine. Uh, the reason I was using this one is because it's a little wider. These sheets are actually like 11 and a quarter. So I was going to make 11 by quarter by 11 quarter squares for plaques. But I figured what's an inch and a bit less, right? These ones are nine and three quarter. So hopefully new wood and less planing, that'll help out the power issue. Plus I unplugged like everything. I just got one plug there. Should be good. Ray chopper, okay, let's do it. Now that these are cut to size, we got some nice workable plaques here. See on the one side, there's some cracking but it's not all the way through. Come on, focus. So that'll be okay. That's the thing about scrap wood. It gets, I don't know, just after a while, it just looks like shit. But this side is good, so that'll be the face, no doubt. Be look, that'll look cool with the old Weatherby logo or something, right? Same with this piece. Yeah, see it's cracked on that. Something like that. That's a nice grain in there. I like that texture. Just that color, that heart in there. It's just, woo. All right, next step, I'm gonna clear the board and reprogram for a nine and three quarter rather than a 11 and a half or whatever this is. This comes out, just get rid of those. Gotta turn my machine off and move this. And yeah, it's gonna be a bit, but some cleanup and reorganization is in order here. And we'll get started on this new project. All right, stay tuned. Everything's cleaned up. I got the new pieces secure with my two-sided tape. I find this works the best for my projects. Like, I don't do anything too crazy. Just some carpet tape. The Safety Pro stuff works pretty good. Um, anyways, so I just decided to put both projects in just because I got such a big table, right? I can home in on this, focus on one project. Once this is done, just home in on the next piece and do it. That won't interfere with each other at all, but you know, at least it's there. I can just simply go from one project to the next. Once I'm finished up here, got everything looking good. Haven't really set anything up because I have to reprogram to compensate for the uh, smaller project piece. So I'll let this just hang out and I'll go do some computer work. That's probably going to take seven days. No, just kidding. I just uh, prefer doing the physical thing rather than the software thing, but... One is necessary for the other. All right, let's go to the computer room. So here we are at the computer. As you can see, I'm plugging in the new measurements for our project, nine and three quarter, nine and three quarter. So that just changes the size. And see our image is a little off. So I'll resize this so it fits better see the original measurements it's about 11 and a quarter here 
yeah so i just got to do some resizing and we'll be on the path to success <clears throat> that wasn't as hard as well wasn't as bad as i thought it would be <clears throat> everything turned out okay sizes look good so i'll show you what goes on with this so you see i got i can um check my tool paths to make sure everything's gonna cut and I just kind of play here it just shows me everything that's gonna happen so yeah see like on this one I can uh, I was a little worried that the it wouldn't follow the shape exactly for whatever reason I don't know sometimes the AI does its own thing but with the tool paths on, I get rid of the material. I just hit play. I can clearly see that it's going to actually carve out this entire project with no problems, right? I have it at 32 times speed just for, you know, so we're not sitting here for 19 minutes. It's going to say 19 minutes to carve out that one, about 50 minutes to carve out this one. Let's just take a quick look here. Yeah, that'll work. I don't know why it's stuck on this, because like this one I can reset it. Great. Light up. This one. There tool pad. Another thing I have to keep in mind is that my feed rates, plunge rates, and depths are proper for the 60 degree bit. I get all my information. I have this app from IDC. Uh, I don't use 100% IDC bits, but their charts are fairly accurate for uh, basically what you're doing. So I recommend checking them out. Check that out, right? They're the same. Now I just have to upload this stuff into the cloud there and I can put it on my CNC machine and <clears throat> start doing some projects. One more thing I'm going to do is uh, just make a path for it to lathe just this small material. That shouldn't take too long. To make the surfacing thing, so I just take this project and I'm just gonna hit new. That gives me the exact sheet with the dimensions. I'm gonna change my bit to my pre-programmed surfacing bit here. So that brings it over here there. And I'm gonna do a square, because, you know, squares, right? And this is nine and three quarter. So I'm just gonna lock these two variables together and go nine point oh that's an eight <clears throat> nine point seven five um there you go and then we're gonna set our depth to about a sixteenth of an inch zero point uh we'll go six three just to round it up a little bit there and that's gonna surface our stuff perfect just like that. Yeah. Pretty good. I'm not too worried. So you see how it's projecting uh, these corners to not be exactly cut out. Uh, it's okay because I'm going to router the edges anyways to make it look all fancy and stuff. I don't know if you can really see that in this video, but yeah, right there, there's going to be a lip. But that's okay. That's going to be routered out anyways. Yeah, that's surfacing, less than 10 minutes. Alrighty, now that all the computer work's done, here's the bits I'm gonna be using, some tools, my machine's there, this is secure. First thing I'm gonna do is I use this 1 16th bit, I'm gonna put it in there and jog my machine to home it right to this corner. And I use a 1 16th because it's very accurate, obviously, it's small. Find zero on the corner, then I'll change the bit to my surfacing bit. Zero in the Z axis and start doing some surfacing. That's the first step. After that's done, I'm gonna switch bits to 
to the 60 degree bit and start doing the carbs. Do, do, do. And this should take, uh, with all the projects together, maybe two to three hours, we'll see. It's gonna be fun. So it starts with homing the machine. Let's do that. Okay, so with the 1 16th bit, I found my corner here. I'm gonna call that zero on my X and Y. Pretty confident with that. Show over here. So everything homed to the bottom left corner so the machine knows where the machine's at. Now I'm gonna tell it where the project's at. So see all homed, everything's good. And I'm gonna do the X and Y. I'm gonna pin drop that. Boom. Boom. There, now it's telling me my offset. So that's good. Now I'm gonna switch bits and do my Z axis for the surfacing bit. And that will be our homing. That'll be ready to upload our first tool path and begin this carve. Okay, now I got that surfacing bit in there and a Z axis is zeroed. Everything's homed in there. Next step is I'm gonna pull up that G-code for the surfacing. So if this all works, let's see here. Open Sesame. Surfacing. Open. There, and then it gives me all my G-code. And it should give me an ETA here. Yeah, three minutes just to do the surfacing. I might run it once or twice, like I'm only taking a 16th off, so we'll see what happens. I don't wanna take too much off, right? So this is very controlled. Next step is I'm gonna put the dust boot on, hook up the vacuum, and we'll get this thing fired up. Okay, so I'm running like the economy vac suction kit here. Just have this tube wired up there into this fancy dust boot. Uh, it's a working project. I'm gonna get something one one day, maybe. But for now, it works. So it's gonna get loud here, so I'm gonna hit this, hit that, and then come down here and hit play, and it will all start working. But it's gonna be loud, so I thought I'd say that first before we get into it. So turn your volume down if you don't want to go deaf. <laughs> took exactly three minutes. Uh, this is nice and smooth now. It's been surfaced. So the dust boot, it controls dust. It doesn't collect all the dust. It just controls the, the finer dust so my whole area doesn't get messy. Like I'm okay with the material building up here. It's not as bad as breathing it in. You know, I don't like wearing masks. I don't know anyone who does. But yeah, like that's all the dust boot does. It just collects the fine dust and lets the bigger material fall. I could probably clean up my vacuum filter. That might give it more suction, but you know, it's another day. For the second one here, I'll take the dust boot off while well, it does it. Uh, but for now, we'll finish this one. I'm gonna upload, I think the Weatherby logo or maybe the Browning logo. I don't know, I'll flip a coin, see which one I wanna do first. Change the bit out leave this one later so i'll do one with the boot and one without the boot just to show the uh comparison of the mess that it leaves behind more so for my own curiosity but uh all right let's get to this you know i think i might just do the browning because it's a bigger logo see how that goes 
All right, so to do that, I'm gonna disassemble, change my bit, upload the new program, and hit go. But always remember to de-energize your equipment. I have a quick kill switch here for my router, but just to be 100% safe, I like to 100% unplug it. Now I know I'm not gonna chop my little fingers off. Now that I have the 60 degree bit in, I re-zeroed only the Z axis for the new depth of the material. Cause remember we took a little bit off. So that's zeroed, dust boots on. Programs loaded for the browning logo. It's gonna take 44 minutes and 48 seconds. So I'll have some time to chill out. Again, turn your volume down or just go deaf. I, I really don't care. <laughs> pretty good a little worried about the finer details and the antlers but uh, it turned out pretty good all right let's just uh, clear this machine out of here see what that looks like so I'm gonna go up into my uh, controller here first I'm gonna lift my z-axis Just lift that out of the way. I'm gonna just move my uh, X and Y out of the way here. Beat it, nerd. Ah. And uh, yeah, got a sign. Browning. Cool. I really like these trees and the antlers, just the finer detail. Uh, it picked up really good. All right, I'm gonna call that done. Uh, just gotta maybe just do a quick sanding. Router the edges later. Get it all looking cool with a, like some weird Roman profile. Next up, I'll do the Weatherby. But uh, now you know all the steps involved, I'm just gonna only record the carve of it little later on I got to put the mount hole or screw bit that'll be interesting now this one's done I cleaned up all the mess I got this project zeroed in dialed up ready to go I'm gonna surface it without the dust boot and figure out how much dust it actually produces here same size same everything okay so that's loaded I'm gonna hit go.
out the dust boot and made a mess, right? Because it's not controlling any of this. Got it all over the side. <clears throat> it wasn't bad for such a small project without the dust boot, but yeah, it just chucks material everywhere without that suction happening. Chopper would have got covered in sawdust. He ran away as soon as the machine started up, but yeah. But yeah, I guess uh, dust boot, it controls your dust. Doesn't eliminate the dust or the material, but it definitely helps out. See, I'm getting little things clogged up under my rails there. Eventually that could build up and affect your machine if you weren't paying attention or if you had a longer car with a bigger project. So yeah, dust boot, way to go. Now I got this boot sucker, boot dust controller all set up again with our V-bit, 60 degrees in there. Everything is ready. Got the Weather B logo loaded. Says it'll take about 20 minutes there. For the Weather B. Let's fire up. <laughs> done weather bee turned out pretty good and so did the browning they both turned out really nice next is I'm gonna do some edging I was gonna use this uh, Roman OG whatever it's called but if I put the edge there I might cut into the lettering a bit it's because it's such a wide bit didn't really think about that till now. Just give it like that profile shape. I'm not too worried about it. So I think I might switch over to this round over just cause it's a smaller bit and I won't be cutting into that G. I might have some more bits kicking around. I'm gonna root through my stuff and see what I got, but kind of leaning towards this for now. But it only gives it a little round over. Just hoping for something cool. We'll see. See what happens. I got lots of stuff kicking around, but that's the next step. Edge this, and then uh, I'm gonna flip them and put the uh, slot for the screw or nail or whatever and then they're done minus staining and all that but yeah that's what they are well there's really hemming and hawing i think we're just going to use this bit should be a little tight there but all in all pretty confident it'll be okay and if not oh i got so much more wood we can just make a new one be a good piece in there not a backup going with it trust the process here we go so to do what I'm about to do I just get the machine right down to there that's not gonna move right and I just run the wood around the machine body it up easy peasy right Right, I guess you could say anyways. So uh, I'll try this one first. A little nervous, but we'll see what happens. Good luck. Well, we went from this to that. Pretty cool, right? I just, uh, probably been staring at this all day, but I have wood putty just to fill in these little holes. It'll match up real nice. Yeah, that worked out pretty good. Got that nice plaque looking. 
profile to it. Neat. And that is close. But it worked. So just trust the process. Right on. There we go. One more step for the woodworking part. That's to select one of these bits. That'll make a nice little screw slot or a hole slot. It goes in, up, down, then out the same hole. Yeah. Probably gonna grab a scrap piece just to practice that. It should be simple, but you never know. Plus I gotta size this up with a screw or a nail. See which one I'm gonna use. Getting there. Oh, I did, uh, this is a scrap piece of wood. I don't know what happened here. So obviously my uh, machining tool path needs work. Cause all I wanted to do was just scrape the surface a bunch. No good. But this guy, that was manual operations. That worked pretty good. Da, 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 da. See that goes in, and it can lock in there. So I might just play with this scrap piece of wood for a while, just to finesse my uh, manual capabilities here before I tackle the actual project. But yeah, that should be good. That last process was uh, extremely stressful and very terrifying. <laughs> so I got uh, on the scrap piece, got a few good uh, practice runs in there, right? Works good, works really good. Um, I don't know what happened here. It's like I didn't go deep enough the first time. Like I was counting my depth. Uh, I got crazy, so I had to redo it. I'm really glad that's on the back, not the front, obviously. But that'll work. So catch in there and be able to hold it up. All proper like. Doop a doo. This one turned out pretty good. Just like one in there. Nice. Uh, it's the first time I've ever done that. It won't be the last. But it just gets better the more you do it, right? Talking about the key slots. Yeah. Alright. It ain't perfect. But it'll do. Now my favorite step. I get to uh, put the stain on them. Not my favorite step, I was kidding. But yeah, that's our plaques. Look good. And now they are stained with uh, boiled linseed oil. I'll let those cure overnight. Looking pretty good, look at that. With the direct light on it. Ooh, it's chopper approved. 